One thing we were talking about uh, earlier in the show here was Matthew's pursuit of 50 goals and how much that pursuit weighs on him mentally. Like, is it changing the way he plays, focusing on this goal scoring uh, in this market? And you're someone who has been through that experience. Can you tell us what that was like for you and if it weighed on your mind? Oh, wait on everybody's mind, right? As you guys saw the other night, I mean, geez, they were trying to get him the yeah. puck as much as they can, right? Like, it just, it takes away from everything. I um, I go back to the fifth, the first 50 goals, which, um, you know, half of it was in Buffalo. But that night in Winnipeg, um, I had 15 shots on goal. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that goes to show you that, you know, they're just trying to feed me the puck as much as they can. and It really takes you off their game, so... I would imagine now that, you know, 50 is gone, 51 is in the books. There's lots of games left for him, you know, to shatter the record. They just got to get back to playing, right? You know, they just got to get back to not looking for him. And, and, and I know the feeling. It's, it's the same with everybody else. And, you know, whether it's the 50 goal or whether it's, you know, somebody trying to get their 300 or 500, you know, the, the team is all aware of it. It's not just the player itself. And, you know, yeah, there was some pressure, I guess, you know, to get that 50. And, um, you know, I think it was from 49. It was, it felt like three months, but it was probably only, you know, a week of two or three games. And then, you know, you finally get it. So, um, yeah, it's, it's um, <laughs> you know, good for him, right? Well, like, you know, the Austin Matthews watch has been on for two or three years for me now. I mean, you know, a few years back, he probably could have got it and got hurt. So it was just a matter of time when he stays healthy because he's uh, he's obviously a special player, and you guys get to watch him every night. guy like Doug Gilmore, it wouldn't have felt much different, though, because he was such a, a great playmaker um, from one game to the next, correct? Yeah, no doubt. He's trying to <laughs> – Dougie's trying to find me all every time he gets on the ice, right? Like, yeah, for sure. And I think Marner's kind of the same thing, right? Like – you know, I, I, you know, you all. I'm sure you guys have commented on before. You love when he shoots the puck more, because he's he, you know, he opens so much up. And you know, maybe in the past he's always tried to look for Austin Matthews or somebody else. But now, you know, and again, as you know, as you know, I mean, you don't score 50 goals unless you got guys around you that are helping you. And, you know, and, and and Austin will tell you that. And anybody that's a goal scorer, well, you're not doing it by yourself. There's tons of guys that are helping you, whether it's your shot from the point or, you know, whether it's a, a Doug Gilmore giving me a tap in, right? Like it's, it's, it, there's people around you helping you. Can you toggle that off? Like when they get to playoffs here, there's pressure on Matthews and Marner to produce uh, after last off season where it hasn't gone awesome for them. It's got to be so hard to find that balance between pushing for team success, but also personally wanting to put up individual numbers, right? Yeah, that's a fine line that we all play. Every team plays, right? Like mm-hmm. especially down the stretch here. You're, you know, you got a guy that's on your line that whether he's got 19 goals, you want him to get 20. But you're going to win the game first, and you know, I, I think the Toronto Maple Leafs sit in a pretty good spot. We all do, really, because you know, the top eight is pretty much set. Right now, it's just a matter of where we're going to where we're going to sit each other, and who's going to have home ice advantage. And I, I will say this that. I mean, you can ask anybody here in Tampa that they don't care where they finish. They just want to be playing well. And um, for these guys, you know, their person, they, they've gone through it before and they've done that before is where, you know, their personal goals kind of outweigh the, you know, the team goals. And that's, that's not the case with this team anymore. Nobody cares who scores. Nobody cares if it's point or, you know, whether it's Sorelli, it doesn't matter in this team. And, uh, that's the step that Toronto has to take. That, uh, uh, regardless of what happens, you know, on the score sheet, it's the bottom line is getting the W, and who cares who scores? Chucky, you as a player, you've experienced some pretty good rivalries, uh, but maybe you can speak to the one now between the Panthers and and the Lightning, and where this where this rivalry could go this spring, watching yeah. the Atlantic Division all season long. Yeah, and, you know, it started last year in the playoffs, right? Like, both, to be honest with you, like the, the, you know, both teams have not been relevant at the same time. And it, even when I was here in Tampa, you know, the Florida Panthers were not the team that we were worried about beating, right? Um, you know, it was more Washington. It, you know, it was, it was more Pittsburgh. And, 
but now the both teams are really good. I mean, it's obviously a tough swing for any team that comes through here, whether it's back to back or not. You know, to come down to Florida and try to get four points is a pretty tough task. And you know, the, what happened last year in the playoffs was awesome. It was a great series. Uh, you know, it really could have either way. To be honest with you, Florida was that good, and I think they're better this year. So, uh, yeah, that it's definitely starting in a couple more playoff you know times you play each other in the playoffs uh you're going to get that rivalry in. but there is an in-state rivalry and now there's two really really good teams that are, are battling each other do you think the lightning look at this remaining stretch and care a whole ton where they finish whether it's second third fourth or is it kind of like you know you're playing a good team doesn't matter or is this a big deal for them down the stretch well, I think they're all, everybody can say that in the playoffs, right? That whoever you're going to play is going to be a good team, yeah. uh, especially in our division, right? Like, man, uh, the four teams that uh, – and only one team is going to get out of that, right? You're going to have to beat Boston, Toronto, or Florida. And those are – any one of those teams is good. So it'll be tough. It really will be tough. So does home ice advantage matter? I, I, I don't think it does as, as much as it has in the past. And I know with the Lightning – they don't. I don't think they they care about it. Uh, sure, you'd like to get a game seven in your own building, but we've also seen that backfire before too, and I've been part of it. So um, you know, it's uh, it's about playing good. It's about playing your game at the end. And to me, it's always been that way. It's always the best team that down the stretch that really has got the best shot at winning. And regardless of where you finish in the standings.